These are working exactly as I expected them to work, except that we've had the Anchor Solex F3800 in the camper and we are gonna move it now back into the house because we are gonna test this thing out using two of them simultaneously in combination with the home power panel. We need some skid plate material right here, like a little rubber strip coming up here or something that takes the beating. I've spent a lot of time uh, moving moving heavy stuff up and down stairs uh, as an HVAC guy. All right, come on over to join your brother. Oli's been working on hauling branches, right? Mm -hmm. We'll come check on you later in the video, okay? Okay. We got our second unit down here, as well as the cord we need to connect it to the home power panel. But before we do anything with connecting these together, we're gonna make sure that all of the firmware is updated both on this unit this one and the home power panel itself and you can do that all inside of the anchor app firmware upgrade is available so we're going to go ahead and do that at 86 percent we're almost done with the update here so that's good we've got three more videos after today's video that we're going to feature some different ways that we can really build out this system. We're actually going to have the maximum amount of storage capacity possible by the time we get to the end of the series and also just kind of explain some different use case scenarios and building out some rigid solar panels that connect directly to these units instead of connecting via grid tied solar. These have the feature of working with grid tied solar which is really cool if you have it but a lot of people don't. And if you're in that situation, then uh, it definitely makes sense to connect some rigid solar panels directly to these units. And it allows you to use them in more of an off-grid sort of application. We've got our two different connection ports. This one is the one that we're going to use to connect to the house. And then we'll go ahead and connect our expansion battery here. Alright, here goes power station number one. The breakers are turned off on the side here. Power station number two. And if I kill the power that's feeding our home power panel, it switches into backup mode. And now we are using the F3800s in combination to power the loads connected to this panel right here. Now what we want to do is give these a little bit of a stress test and make it draw over 6,000 watts. 6,000 watts is the maximum that one of these can handle. In theory, we can go up to 12,000 watts. So we're going to see what we can do to come close to hitting that. Turn this back on. There we go. All right, we're going to switch the mode here in our settings. We're going to turn off manual backup power. You can see we're drawing an even amount of power, 430 watts here and 430 watts there. So it does a really good job of splitting the load between the two units. So let's go ahead and increase our load. These are working exactly as I expected them to work, except that it seems like it's limited in the amount that it can back feed to the main panel while the grid is turned on. And the reason that I say that is because when I increase the load in my main panel, the F3800s will try to offset that energy usage. So you can see right now we're pulling zero watts from the grid because the F3800s are feeding back through the home power panel and offsetting any load that was happening inside of my main panel. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn on more loads from my electric range and you'll see that as it comes up, as soon as we exceed six kilowatts, it then only backfeeds that 5.96 kilowatts from the F3800s. So let me just shut off my burners one at a time here. There we go. Now we're below six kilowatts and you can see that now the F3800s are fully carrying the load again. So I think I would need to add some more loads in our backed up panel over here and to be able to then take advantage of the full 12,000 watts but I need to move some of the circuits over in order to test that. 
I got the electric range moved over into the backup panel and we're gonna go ahead and fire it off and see what happens. Right now we're in the self-consumption mode, which means basically the Anchor Solix F3800 is going to use the energy inside of it so that it has more capacity to take charge from solar sources. So we should be able to go ahead and turn this on right now. We're gonna set that to bake and that's gonna dramatically increase the load and right now you can see that we've got our grid at zero watts, 4.8 kilowatts coming from the F3800s because we've got the two of them connected. Now let's go ahead and turn on a couple more. So that one should bring us above that six kilowatts, which it is, but right now it's still going to be outputting just that max of basically six kilowatts. Now the reason it taps out at six kilowatts is that it is basically increasing the lifespan of your Anchor Solix F3800 batteries. If it was to crank out that maximum 12,000 watts even while the grid was connected, it's just really not necessary. And so when we go into fully backed up mode, when we have an off-grid situation, that's when we're gonna be able to tap into that full 12 kilowatts. So let's go and kill the main power, and then we'll see if it starts pulling the full amount from the F3800s. We'll shut this off for now. Okay. As soon as we kill this, it's gonna be as if the grid is disconnected. Here we go. Now we're switched over into running off of the F3800s exclusively. You can see right there that it does indeed say that we are off the grid. Let's go turn that massive load back on and see what happens. Now that we are fully off the grid, as soon as we turn this on, the only power source available is going to be the F3800s. So let's go ahead and turn it to bake. And we'll just see what happens here. Obviously it's gonna carry that three kilowatt load it looks like right now. Let's bump it up. Now we're at 4.5 kilowatts. Turn on another one. 6.9 kilowatts. Okay, we are seriously pulling a lot of energy from those two units. And another one. Let's see how high we can get this. 10.59 kilowatts right now. That is a lot of energy to be using off the grid. You could run any major appliance that you can think of and run most of them at the same time with this much power output capacity. It is seriously impressive that those two units are able to do that. Let's go downstairs and listen to them and see how much noise they're making while they're under this 10.5 kilowatts of energy usage. This is crazy. All right, here they are. There you can see we've got 5,140 watts coming out of that one. 5,146, 45, 46. They're very even, again, as we saw earlier in the video. So that's how you get the entire output capacity of these units. That's pretty sweet. In this video right here, we're gonna go through and connect the F3800 using a standard generator transfer switch. This one down here is all about the home power panel and how that integrates with your home's electrical system. I'm curious how Oli is doing outside. I was driving and then all the thistles, or like half of them, come up and whack me in the back. What? Time? Oh, time. Oli is on the clock, so let's see here. 